Hi everybody, Dr. Adam Smith from Ultimate Bariatrics. Uh, talking about reflux today. Uh, you know, you all know that we do weight loss surgery, which we consider both bariatric and metabolic because it's treating diseases, not just pounds. Uh, but what you may not know or may know is we also do surgery for reflux or esophagitis or GERD, many, many names for the same kind of problems. Uh, we also do surgery for gallbladder problems, hernias, hiatal hernias, things like that. So um, I've been doing anti-reflux surgery for over 30 years, and it has really evolved. Uh, not only the surgery itself has evolved, but the workup and diagnosis. We've known for decades that pills just treat the symptoms of reflux. They don't cure the underlying problem of reflux. So surgery really is the most definitive treatment for reflux. The key is determining who's a good surgical candidate, determining which surgery is most appropriate, and then proving to those who really don't want to pay for it that you need the surgery, you know, the dirty I word, insurance. So I'm gonna kind of go through briefly kind of how we approach a person that is suffering from GERD, reflux, heartburn, things like that. So this is the stomach or this is the GI tract. What's not shown is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is the muscle that separates the chest from the abdomen. The things that run through the diaphragm, through the opening in the diaphragm that is called the crura are the aorta and the esophagus. Sometimes that opening is weak or stretched that allows the top of the stomach to herniate up into the chest. When that happens, that can be a cause of reflux or GERD. It allows the acid from the stomach to regurgitate into the esophagus. We normally have a mechanism to prevent that. It's called the lower esophageal sphincter mechanism. Now, it's not a true sphincter like the other end of the GI tract, if you know what I'm talking about, or the end of the stomach called the pylorus. Those are true sphincters. They have specialized muscle there that you can see through a microscope or you can see with your naked eye that cause them to open and close. This is a complex. There are certain things that have to be working for it to work. So if you measured the pressure inside of someone's abdominal cavity, it is what we call a positive pressure, zero to five millimeters of mercury. Just a slight bit of pressure exists in the abdomen. When we look in the chest cavity, that has a negative pressure in the chest, anywhere from zero to 10 millimeters of mercury of negative pressure. So that creates something we call a gradient. A gradient is something you have to push against. So the gradient wants to make contents from here go into the chest. The lower of soft gel sphincter mechanism provides a gradient to keep things where they belong. And it requires several things. Number one, it requires the esophagus to be in the abdomen and not and the stomach to be in the abdomen and not up in the chest. That's number one. We need to have muscle that works at the lower esophagus called the lower soft gel sphincter mechanism. And we have to do con deal with the conditions that could either increase the abdominal pressure or decrease the thoracic pressure. So when that gets disrupted, we get GERD or reflux. And it can be diagnosed by multiple ways. One of the ways we diagnose it is with an upper GI or a barium swallow or an esophagram where it's an x-ray test, you swallow contrast, and we see is there a hiatal hernia, yes or no? Is the contents herniating or, or is the stomach contents refluxing up into the esophagus, yes or no? And that's kind of a crude, rude, rudimentary test. Another test we sometimes do to determine the severity or what damage has been done by the reflux is an endoscopy or an esophagogastroduodenoscopy. Most people just call it EGD. Where we go through the mouth with a flexible scope with a light on the end of it, go down through the esophagus, we go down through the esophagus, through the stomach, through the first and second portion of the intestine, and then we pull back and look. So we're looking, A, do you have a hiatal hernia, yes or no? 
B, do you have ulcers, polyps, or tumors, yes or no? C, is there any damage in the esophagus or stomach or even the duodenum related to pathology going on? So that's the next step. That's very commonly done, and commonly that has been done before we ever see a patient for reflux. So we always treat reflux medically first. We really do surgery when people either have reflux that fails medical therapy or reflux that's causing other problems. Like some people choke at night because the reflux is so bad or it's causing ulceration or even a precancerous condition in the esophagus called Barrett's. So when we see someone that we think, man, their reflux is so bad, they need to have surgery, we have other algorithms or tests or protocols that help us decide what we want to do about it. Now, if you're having horrible, horrible reflux and you're skinny, then we go down one pathway or one type of surgical pathway or two. But if you're significantly overweight, then we need to look at what's contributing to the cause of the reflux, which may be your weight. So then there are other operations we do for that. Uh, a common operation we do for someone that's significantly overweight that has horrible intractable recurrent reflux is a bypass or the Roux-en-Y gastric bypass, also sometimes called a gastrojejunostomy. Um, so people get confused about those two terms. Uh, all bypasses are gastrojejunostomies, but not all gastrojejunostomies are bypasses. So, so if you if, if you're like someone that's post-sleeve, you've had a sleeve and you have reflux, and we start talking about doing something to correct your reflux, we're doing a gastrojejunostomy. If you're overweight and you haven't had a sleeve and you're having horrible reflux, then we might kill two birds with one stone and go ahead and do a bypass. So some people, after they've had their weight loss surgery, after they've had their sleeve, up to 15% of those people will get bad heartburn or reflux. So we need to determine what kind of heartburn or reflux that is. There are two kinds. One is you can still have acid coming up. Oh, here's my sleeve right here. You can have acid coming up from the sleeve into your esophagus. But the more common reflux that we see after a sleeve gastrectomy is bile reflux. Bile is a digestive enzyme that's made in the liver. It comes down this tube called the bile duct to empty into the first part of the intestine called the duodenum. In a normal stomach, where you have a big old normal stomach, if the bile refluxes up into the stomach, bile, which is alkaline or high pH, mixes with the acid in the stomach, which is acid or low pH, and becomes neutralized. So you never know you have it. When you've had weight loss surgery, like a sleeve, and you don't have all these acid-producing cells in there anymore, if the bile gets into your stomach, sometimes it can get all the way to your esophagus and cause bile reflux. Knowing which type of reflux it is helps us determine which surgery, if any, is the best option for you. So in the past, this is why people hated considering reflux surgery, is the test we had to do to determine that was called a 24-hour pH study. They put this tube down your nose and it had a, and it collected data over 24 hours and transmitted it and it gave us a result. It told us whether, whether there's reflux present, yes or no. Is it acid, is it bile, how bad is it? and it calculated something called a Demeester score. Dr. Demeester score was kind of like the guru of reflux for years and years and years and years. So a normal Demeester score is like 15 or so. But if you have severe reflux, we've seen Demeester scores in the 60s and 70s. Those are people that need surgery. People with normal Demeester scores, we usually can treat medically unless there's other problems going on. So everyone hated that test. Who wants to walk around with a tube hanging out their nose for 24 hours? So we have a new device, and I've got my hands on one. This is clean. It's never been in a human being or anything, and it's called a Bravo. It's kind of hard to see, but we have a little transmitter right here. This little transmitter is about double the size of a Tic Tac. 
and it's placed endoscopically. So you're asleep and this thing here, this introducer, which is very soft and very flexible, goes down your mouth and we place it about this far above where the esophagus meets the stomach. And this little transmitter stays in there about 48 hours and then it detaches and just passes through like, you know, food or stool. And what it does is it transmits us very good precise data that tells us what surgery, if any, we can do that will get rid of your reflux or your GERD or your esophagitis. So that's called a Bravo test. I don't have its uh, buddy called the Endoflip around. We have another device because what we also want to know is does the esophagus contract properly? Does the stomach contract properly? And that's called a manometry or a pressure test. So same thing. You used to have, have a tube placed down your mouth and it would measure these pressures and everything like that. Now we have an endoscopic version of that that can give us some pretty good data that'll let us know. Yeah, this one's so bad it needs surgery. Nah, this one we can treat with medication or, well, it's up to the patient. So what I'm really excited about is our ability to now get hard data and not just go off our gut or our clinical judgment. Of course, there's no substitute for clinical judgment, but go off a hardcore data that helps us make cognitive or really good smart decisions for your health benefits. So the Bravo is really, really cool. The downside is you have to be off your heartburn medicine for 48 hours before you have the test. But if you're having suffering from heartburn, reflux, esophagitis, uh, if you've been told you need surgery for reflux, come see us. Let's work it up, make sure we have the right diagnosis, and then we come up with the correct solution for your problem, whether it's surgery, medication, both. Lots of options out there. For more information on reflux, you can go to our website at ultimatebariatrics.com, uh, and you can see these things uh, in, in live motion sometimes. So. Don't suffer, don't self-diagnose. If you're having heartburn, indigestion, reflux, whether you're a post-op weight loss surgery or not, or whether you're skinny or whether you're big, uh, come see us, make an appointment, consult with one of our surgeons. Let's get the diagnosis correct and then come up with a good treatment plan for you. That's all I have for today. I'll see you soon.